Recently at Tech Yes City, we have been testing out latency on different CPUs using some very different tests, ones that I use actually a lot in my day-to-day -day life. And so we're gonna run those tests through the Ryzen 9 7950X here today and see if we can either make the CPU spasm out or if it's going to be, say, better than the i9 13900K or the i9 10850K, which we tested in a separate video, and I'll put the link up here. But before we get into this video, I'm gonna put out a disclaimer. These tests are not FPS benchmarks. We're not focusing on anything gaming, and we are not testing Cinebench R23 either, even though I'll show the results here where the Ryzen 9 7950X does really well. What I'm looking at here is fast actions per minute on the desktop, and which of these CPUs is very responsive because saving time while I'm away from my keyboard doesn't actually compare to saving time while I'm at my keyboard and I'm noticing the differences. And also our test system is as apples to apples as to apples as we can get. I'm using a fresh install of Windows 10 and Windows 11 on the two drives that we're using in today's comparison and we are recording a lot of these tests in either 120 FPS or a thousand FPS at high speed footage. And the second point that I will drive home and emphasize heavily is that both these installs are tuned. And in fact, for both the installs, I have turned off Windows security features in the BIOS. And we've got another separate video coming in the future about these settings, but they are basically some of them can introduce a blanket of lag to your whole system. Now, of course, if you want to get good input latency, I do heavily recommend tuning windows, but also having good gear besides the tuning. And that is a monitor with fast input latency where we're using the Philips Evnia 175 Hertz, which has actually got the best input lag that I've tested on any monitor that's come through Tech Yes City. Now also we're using a Razer Viper Mini and in between Razer and Logitech, both these mice companies make phenomenally low input latency mice. And there's also a lot of other mouse companies out there. But when it comes to input latency, I know both these companies are at the forefront of offering the best and lowest input lag, period. But with that aside, let's start off with the Windows 10 benchmarks right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get Windows 10 Pro activated for as little as $15 or Windows 11 Pro for as little as $21, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. Use that coupon code BFTYC for a big 30% discount and the link in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and today we're going to start off with the Windows 10 benchmarks. And the reason for that is, is that Ryzen 9 7950X, it runs better on Windows 10 than it does on Windows 11. And in fact, I think any CPU, except maybe 12th or 13th gen, runs better on Windows 10. And I can't stress the differences between these two OSs if you are into getting the lowest input latency possible and you notice these things. Though, so let's start off with the good news here for the 7950X. This is Windows 10 rapidly opening 10 music files and then testing out the worst score versus the best score in terms of delay. And here is where the 7950X scored a victory here over both the i9-13900K and the i9-10850K. And this one left me a little bit confused because if we go over to the next result here, when it comes to opening files in Windows 10, or even for that case, searching files in Windows 10, here is where the Ryzen 7950X scored consistently the worst score versus both the 10850K and the 13900K. So what I mean by this is I'm searching something in the Windows 10 search bar and I'm waiting until that last key actually displays on the screen to when the search comes up itself. Now moving on to the Windows 10 DPC latency scores, here's where I leave up this benchmark for over a minute, and then I record the worst score that comes up, and it's usually to do with that bar down the bottom, which in this case was 245.8 microseconds. I think it is microseconds versus either nanoseconds or milliseconds. People did make sure in the last video that I have to correct that when I talk about these numbers. But consistently, I found that the 10850K was the fastest in this particular benchmark. Now the next benchmark we are going to pull up here is the visible input latency 
from when I am really quickly moving my hand to hit the mouse, noticing when that mouse initially moves at 1000 FPS to when that initial movement then appears on the screen. So this is total system input delay. And here is where the 7950X did really well as the other two CPUs did. So in a nutshell with this test, if you're a gamer and you're worried about, oh, is one CPU going to give me lower input latency than another CPU? I wouldn't be concerned here. So to keep things short here, if you've got an i9-13900K and you're gaming competitively and you think changing from that i9 to say a Ryzen 9 is going to make you more competitive or vice versa, then no, it's not. There's either some other problem with your gear whether it be you've got a crap mouse or you could just suck at games. So basically with the Ryzen 9 7950X, I'm at a stage where I'm very happy with this CPU on Windows 10 for doing power using and also getting low latency. AMD have done a really good job with this CPU. There is some things that I can't explain the differences between the two architectures, why some of these benchmarks are a little bit faster on Ryzen and some of them slower. But one thing I will tell you in general is that Windows 10 tuned Ryzen 7000 series CPUs are going to run really well on this OS. Another thing is too, is if you're into video editing, then you're going to get a good experience out of this CPU. But what we're going to go into now is the Windows 11 benchmarks, which gave me a lot of insight into the 13th and 12th gen CPUs when I was doing these heavy benchmarks and I had a lot of different applications loaded and I was just dragging and dropping and smashing footage in or opening certain files. And here is where on Windows 11, the Ryzen 9 7950X, it did extremely well. It stood the test of time when we had the MP4 drag and drop into uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as the initial dropping of the clips was pretty much instantaneous here. Now, another thing that's important to do if you're looking to get the best performance, especially for video editing or doing anything professional, would be in my opinion to open up your hard drive, or in this case, your SSD, and you definitely want to have an SSD on that note, and then go into the properties and make sure you got this right buffer cache flushing option uh, checked, and that'll essentially help maximize the speeds of your SSD. So the next benchmark we've got up here is opening 10 files rapidly in Windows 11, and here is where it did a great job and it didn't choke out. So the i9 managed to choke out in both these particular benchmarks that I've showed right now, but the Ryzen 9 7950X did fine here. But why this is, we'll get through the rest of the benchmarks, then we'll talk about it. But we've got next up here, the Madman music search, where I'm searching for a particular music file. And here's where the Ryzen 9 did ever so slightly worse than both the i9 variants. And then we've got lastly, the Ryzen 9 7950X DPC latency. And here's where it's very similar to Windows 10, as opposed to the 13900K, which had some issues in Windows 11. So with those benchmarks all done, the Ryzen 9 7950X, it's geared up towards heavy lifting on both Windows 11 and Windows 10. Now I definitely prefer Windows 10 if you care about latency and just overall snappiness. I think it's a better OS in general for power users. That said, however, Windows 11 was designed with the 12th and 13th gen CPUs in mind. They actually redesigned the thread director to accommodate for those CPUs. But I feel like the 7950X, it runs fine in Windows 11, but there was a nuance that I found, especially compared to say the 10850K, and that was when I was dropping MP4 files into a video editing project, there was this weird issue where sometimes it would just ever so slightly skip, whether it be a frame, and it just felt a little bit inferior to the 10850K for this particular task. So when it comes to me, I'm not looking for the best FPS as we said in the intro, nor am I looking for the highest Cinebench score, even though the 7950X does a really good job at that. What I'm looking for is something that can support the GPU, especially when it comes to encoding and decoding for video editing and do the snappiest job of doing that. And that's where I feel like the i9-10850K is still coming out on top, especially in certain scenarios. Though, that being said, if you've got a 7950X and you need to do heavy lifting, it is a phenomenal CPU for the job. And in my opinion, I would much rather this CPU in my personal rig than an i9-13900K. And that's the weird thing about it, is that 
I thought the 13900K with the iGPU would be better for my tasks, but I was having these very weird issues where I could get the CPU to just spasm out as opposed to the 7950X, which exhibited none of that behavior, nor did the i9-10850K. Though, another thing is too, guys, these tests that we're showing you here today, they may be, a lot of people would call them unprofessional and this and that. And at the end of the day, if I can help someone get an answer and they're scratching their head and they're sitting there scratching their head to the point where perhaps they're going bald. And I don't know about you guys, but if I can save someone from going bald, then I've done a good job. I mean, look, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm scared of going bald. It's actually one thing that I'm really scared of is going bald. I don't want to go bald. So if I can help someone not go bald by providing some good benchmarks and some good answers, then I have done my job here at Tech Yes City. Another thing is too, these benchmarks do take a long time because we're getting digital to analog and then digital again, then analog in terms of analysis and then going digital again in the reporting of the numbers. So it does take a long time to do these kinds of benchmarks, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one in terms of Ryzen 9 7950X. It's a great CPU and in fact, I'm eagerly looking forward to Ryzen 8000 because I do want to give that a try and switch over and give you guys a report on switching my main uh, system to AMD. I feel like by the time 8000 series is out, I'll be ready to make a switch yet again because switching my main rig, it does come with a lot of hassles. It does come with a lot of teething pains, getting everything set up on that new system when it comes to all my logins and favorite sites and all my favorite programs. But I've done that on the i9-10850K and reporting back on that CPU over the i9-13900K, it's just completely different experience for me personally. I'm having no frustrations with my system on anything I do. It's exactly how I remember when I was smashing out videos in 2019, 2018. And so I'm back to that experience where it was really fast and really snappy. Now, another thing is too, don't underestimate, and this is the final closing point, is the CPU's only one piece of the puzzle. Don't underestimate the rest of your gear. Have a really good mouse. Have a, have a good monitor with low input latency. Have a keyboard with, I mean, the highest actuation point without you making any errors. These things do make a big difference. And overall, they can help your productivity out a lot. With that aside, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, then be sure to drop a question in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And with that aside, love reading those thoughts and opinions, just like today's question of the day, which comes from Yelchai, and they ask, so you frequent between living in Queensland, Australia, and Japan, or now permanently in Japan, now that QLD Queensland and Australia, the housing prices have caught up with the rest of Australia. So uh, I actually was kind of permanent in Japan for a bit, but I'm decided I'm going back to Australia more permanently in Australia because I think in a nutshell, the, the way to sum it up would be Japan is a great place to live, but for me personally, it's a bad place to work. I just, I can't work as good as I can in Australia. There's just... For, in, for instance, I've just got way more space in Australia, way more space. And then there's just the culture of picking things up and the selling things. Everyone's a lot closed doors. You'll notice all the parts hunts I've done here have pretty much been me going to certain stores and me going online. There's never, I've never gone to someone's house here and picked something up. It just doesn't happen. And I actually love that experience. And I love just meeting random people in that case, getting hardware with a lot of different stories to it as opposed to hardware that just ends up at a hardware store. So for me, my passion for working in Australia is much higher than it is in Japan. So I'm gonna be organizing to try and get the rest of the fam over to Australia, that's all in the works. But in the meantime, there's also something else that I got in the works that I have to sort out in Australia immediately. So I'll be back in Australia very soon, guys, and I will make an update vlog. And also, I do have to finish off some sponsor spots here. So there will be a couple of sponsor spots coming. One's gonna be a vacuum cleaner, for instance, which is actually a really good vacuum cleaner, which is why I took the sponsor spot. And there's also a phone uh, software networking app that'll come out too. So look forward to delivering those videos and then getting you guys some real juicy used parts 
and back getting back to more true tech yes city form which we will be doing very soon but videos like these as well they're on my mind constantly and we will test out as well before we go i know there's going to be people asking about what about the uh, 7800x 3d 7700x and also the single uh, silicon solution the um, 5600g for example we will test those out in due time this stuff does take a while and at this point in time though ryzen my my gut feeling is ryzen 7000 before we close out my gut feeling with this cpu is that it's it's good to go it's really good um and i'd be happy if this was in my main system by a long shot it's there's nothing say for instance ryzen 2000 ryzen 1000 i noticed some big latency issues when it came to doing my work on certain cpus there and so i really didn't use amd in my main rig for that long but I, I rage quit and so this cpu here it's definitely going to deliver in terms of offering a much more perfected experience in terms of snappiness that's my overall opinion of it using it and also testing it here it's a great cpu and i'd prefer it over the i9 3900k anyhow done i'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon peace out for now bye